In this video, I'll be showing you how to make a dress that appears to have a yoke without an actual yoke being cut out of it. Okay, so this would look like a yoke from afar, but you can see that there are no seam lines there and it's just a manipulation to make it look that way. You're welcome to Kema Freak. My name is Kemi Omorube. If you are new to the channel, please kindly subscribe to the channel. We really love to have you as part of the crew. Without further ado, let's get on to the video. We are starting with a basic bodies block here. I have the back here and I have the front here with the bust that I have a tutorial on how to recreate this. You may want to check it out. I also have the basic sleeve here. So this is a short sleeve, just the length I need. So you can go ahead and work with any length you intend to use for your outfit. I have a bust that that is just two inches wide here. I have a regular one inch wide waist that, which I'm considering increasing just a tiny little bit. And every other part of this pattern is regular, okay? Just the regular basic bodice pattern. Now let me just put the, away the back so that we can work briefly on the front pattern. So you decide on the depth of the yoke you are attaching to this piece and I'm working with seven inches. So I'll just mark seven inches and draw a straight line across. We are attaching a yoke without attaching a yoke. What I mean is this outfit will look like it has a yoke, but the yoke is just part of the body. It's not really a yoke, okay? So I have divided this this way. And like I said, I'm considering widening this dart but whatever you do to your dad, make sure that you add, add it right back here. So instead of the regular one inch wide, I'm using 0 0.75 on both sides. So I already have a tiny excess here. So I'll just leave this this way. So a one inch wide dart. So ensure that you replace that here on your pattern. Now I'm using a 1.5 inch wide dart. So ensure that you balance it up by adding whatever extra you have right to the side of your pattern so for this i already have additional half an inch here which i'll just take out this way so i'm not doing a bust tightening it depends on how you want your outfit to look at the end of the day for mine i'm not going for like the most sculpted head outfit i want it to look simple easy to wear and all that so i'll be transferring the bust that to the waist so that we have just this single dart to deal with so in doing that i'm slashing open my dart line and i'll just close this bust dart okay so i want to blend the side for a continuation like so Now I'm just going to cut out the excess I have here, which is like one quarter of an inch away on both sides. And I'm leaving half an inch for my dart. And this half an inch, I'm leaving it because I need sewing allowance to sew back this dart. We are going for an open dart. So I'm cutting open this part of the fabric. But you see all of that when we are transferring to fabric. So at this point, you may want to adjust the neckline as you wish. You can also change the shape of the neckline. But I'm going for 4.5 inches around here. And the depth will also be 4.5 inches. So at this point, you may want to measure the width of the shoulder line and for me it is 3.5 so that I can replicate that for the back. So this is a very simple outfit that shouldn't take time to recreate. Remember that this line is here for a purpose. So I'll set this aside, pick up the back. First, I'll start with the back tightening. So 
So the, the length of this back is supposed to be 15.5. So first, let's tighten the back. I already added um, back my half an inch on this side. So I'll go ahead and cut this. But before then, please, do the same thing. If you want the same design for the back as well, do the same thing you did on the front bodies here. I'm marking seven inches downward and also if you want to modify the neckline there's a time to do that so remember what we did to the shoulder we measured the shoulder and it was 3.5 so i'll just go with 3.5 i also want this to be a little bit deeper than one inch so i went for 1.5 inch or inches so it's a little deep, a little wider. Now I can go ahead and cut this out. Okay, so now we have our back pattern, the front pattern and the sleeve pattern. Meanwhile, for the bottom of this dress, we are making use of a 180 degree flare. You may want to check out the tutorial on how to create a 180 degree flare. So I will link up that tutorial above and in the description box so that you can check it out. I also went ahead, we're making use of this lace fabric. I see it's a transparent lace. So I cut out this doll face satin now it's time to transfer the patterns to fabric right away. Now here is the front bodies. We have all our allowances in place. I have 1.5 inches allowance here. You can also make use of one inch. So I have half an inch down here. Remember that we have half an inch here for the dart placement and also half an inch at the neckline and shoulder line. I'll go ahead now to cut out that of the back. So we have this. Now, I'm going to notch the part where I outlined my yoke. Okay, we are not attaching a separate yoke, but at the same time, the lining and the interlining won't go beyond here. So this is the depth for the lining, the neck depth for the lining and the interlining. So I will notch here so that I know exactly where to place my lining when it's ready. So that's done. I can pull off my papers now and cut away the yoke part of it. Then I'll transfer the new pattern to the door face satin and the lining. So these two will serve as lining and interlining. I no longer need this. I'll do the same thing here. Now here is what we have here for both the interlining and the lining pieces and I have the same thing for the front. Now let's move on to the sewing process. Now here is the lace we cut out. I will just pick out the interlining, that's the door face satin here. And I will lay it over the lace. Stabilize it with my pins. So 
remember to put the right side over the wrong side of the lace. So when you position it this way, you see that the position of your door face satin is just half an inch above the part you notched. So I'll just place it properly so that we can go so the dart. Okay, now I have this stabilized. Now here is the lining piece. I will also go ahead to sew the dart for the lining. Now I'm sewing by the half an inch seam allowance we have here. So if you're working with a lace that has tones, peels, go ahead and rip it off before attempting to sew. Now, having sewn the dart for the lace and interlining complex and also for the lining, I will turn this onto the other side and you know this is the lining, this is the inner part of the lining and this is what we want inside. So it's time to sew the neckline of the interlining and lining together by half an inch to close up the top of the interlining. So I'm sewing by half an inch. Now we have our outfit looking like this. I'll go ahead give this a good press and repeat the entire process for the back. Now I'll be repeating the entire process for the back. Laying this over this, I'll go ahead to sew the dart just like I did for the front. And I'll do the same thing, repeat it again for the other side. Here is the lining, I'll also sew in the lining for the dart and we'll just place it the same way we have the front. In case you didn't see it properly, this is what our front piece looks like right now here it is so we made use of only the waist that and this is what we have on the right side and we have our yoke looking like this now here is the front piece once again and the back pieces now it's time to sew the front onto the back and i'll do the same thing on both sides i'm sewing the shoulder lines together by half an inch seam allowance. So at this stage, we want to sew the neckline and I'll be making use of this bias tape. This is a one inch wide bias tape with quarter inch folds on the side. So I'm gonna be sewing the first quarter inch on the seam allowance. Then we'll use this to turn it inside to give it a neat finishing along the neckline. So let's go do that. After this first seam, I'm going to turn my bias. You know the regular fold that a bias tape comes with, I'll fold it, then I'll fold it again. And you may want to trim of the excess seam allowance on the lace so that this part doesn't appear bulky okay so now take your time fold the first one quarter of an inch here fold again but this time we are not doing piping so we are going to fold the third time inside in such a way that the lace is at the top and then i will stitch now here is the neckline we just sealed together and I also went ahead to leave one inch open here between the interlining and the lining. What I'll do next is to sew the front and the back together by the seam allowance which is 1.5 inch here. So I'm sewing the lace and the interlining together. Just remember that we are treating the lace and the door face satin as a single piece. So whatever we are doing, we are doing them together as if it's just one fabric while I will sew the lining separately inside too by the same allowance of 
inch i'll do the same thing on both sides this is the ample still open on both sides and i'll sew my seam allowance side seam allowance inside here and i've done the same thing on the lining now it's time to fix the sleeve now here is my sleeve i have two pieces here i've gone ahead to also sew the side seam on the sleeve i sewed by 1.5 inch 20 inches this thing keeps confusing me please let me know in the comment section if it's correct to say inches for 1.5 or if it's still an inch so i have the ample open what i will do next is to position my sleeve well make sure you're using you know there's a, there's a sleeve for each side make sure that you're using the right sleeve for that side also i also have a notch at the center of my sleeve here so i know exactly where i should pin onto the shoulder line so i'll turn this inside out and i'll be sewing by half an inch so what you want to do is to pin pin first pin all round so that you are sure what you're doing also this shoulder seam please go ahead and trim it because you're not going to be covering up that seam so that way it won't be obvious on the right side of your fabric so you have to pin this process so that you know if it fits into each other although you should have cross checked that already from the pattern before even cutting the fabric but all the same it doesn't hurt to check all over again so pin all round now when you get to this side with lining i'm not going to be stitching the lining along the side i'm just going to work on only the lace and the door face satin around around this part of the ample where we have lining i will leave the lining free because at the end of the day i'll use the lining to turn this seam allowance Okay, so I'm stitching the sleeve onto the ample by half an inch. I'll do the same thing on the other side. <laughs> now here is our sleeve fixed. On the inside here is what we have. We have a raw opening here, a raw edge. So what you will do is trim off the seam allowance on the lace. Ensure that it's tiny and invisible from the right side of the fabric. Then we have a line in here. I'll just open up this lining and use it to close up the lower part of the armhole by the same half an inch you seal the lace by. Okay, so I'm sewing here close by half an inch. I'll do the same thing on the other side. Now this is what we have. You can see how neat it looks even on the inside. This is the inner part of the armhole. Now we are going to be joining the skirt part. Guys, for the skirt part, we have a 180 degree flare. I must have mentioned it earlier on. Then we have the main fabric and the interlining, and we also have the lining. I initially didn't want to add the lining, but I kind of thought against it. So what I will do first is to pin the lace onto the interlining. You guys know that we are treating these two as one. So I'll pin these two together so that it will just be one complex like this. The lining will be treated as a separate piece. Now I want to sew the lace interlining complex, that's the lace and the doll face satin, onto the main fabric. So I'll just lift up the lining. I'm not working on the lining just yet. I will notch this the center of this piece right here and hold these two together from the back to the other side of the back and I'll stitch by half an inch. Now for the lining, I'll do the same thing, just exactly the same way. I'm stitching this onto the main fabric. I'll be stitching the lining onto this lining, okay? The lining part of the skirt onto this lining. Now here is what we have on the wrong side. So this has helped make our waistline very neat. The next step now is to sew the zip. Now we'll be attaching the zip and you know, just sew your zip the regular way you sew your zip. But let me quickly point something out at the center back here. 
And now we have a one inch zip allowance on both sides, okay? I want to sew a zip on the lace and the interlining without the lining, okay? That was why I removed half an inch here. To, I separated the lining from the interlining by half an inch here so that I can pin this on the lace. Remember that a zip was extended to the lacy part so I can just continue once I get to this junction here. I'll just continue on only the interlining and the lace, pulling out the lining. That way I can then use my lining to close that zip allowance so that we'll have a neat finishing along the center back. So at this stage, I want to believe most of you know how to fix zip. Otherwise, let me know in the comment section if you want a tutorial on how to fix zip. So I'll go ahead now and attach my zip to the center back on only the lace and the interlining. I'm starting at the neckline on the lace and once I get to this junction, I pull out the lining and continue on the interlining and the lace all the way down. Now the zip is fixed on the main fabric and I want to go around to turn here using the lining. So remember that the lining is free around here. So what I'm going to do is to notch the lace a little bit up to the level where I have the zip so that way I can turn the lining around and use it to close up the zip allowance so that we have a neat finishing along the zip allowance. So just do this, turn it around and sew for one side, okay? So I'll sew as close to this zip seam as possible and I'll do the same thing on the other side. Now here is the back of the dress. Here is the zip opening. And you can see the neatness we have along here because we turned the allowance using the lining. Now on the hem of this outfit, I have cut out some edges these edges are from the lace i just use my scissors to cut it out and i'll be placing it on the hem and stitching this is because the owner of this outfit wants to make use of the edge and because you know we made use of a peplum that's a flare a 180 degree flare here there is no way i can have straight edges here and at the same time i didn't want to use gathers or a shaped and all that so now i'm just going to place the edges around it and sew it and uh, I will be top stitching actually along the edge of the lace. So once that is done, that will be it with this outfit. Next I'll be showing you the final look. Here is the finished dress. I hope you enjoyed watching this tutorial. If you have learned a thing or two, please drop a comment in the comment section. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't, and see you in the next video. Bye and thanks for watching once again.